Today, we're going to paint a car using the patterns inside of the iRacing template. And I'm also going to show you some pretty cool things you can do with those templates too. So let's get started. Hey guys, XJ here. Today, we're going to paint uh, using the templates inside of Photoshop. Uh, not doing any custom shapes, but only using what the template provides. Now, you're aware, I'm sure, that you can paint inside the UI, and that's great. Um, but all of these patterns that you see down here at the bottom are usually already tucked away inside of that template that we have open inside of Photoshop. And they're down here in the Car Patterns folder. If you'll just turn that on, uh, you will start to see that. It's very, very helpful, and you can get some pretty unique things uh, out of this using these templates and that's what we're going to talk about today and show you how to do okay we're going to open the car patterns folder that you see right here and you can choose any number of uh, patterns that uh, are listed in here there's some more than others depending on the car but we're going to go with this one for demonstration purposes now a couple of things before you start this process number one go up here and uh once you you know you've got the pattern that you like turn off uh before exporting tga it, at a minimum Turn off the car mandatory if you want to leave the mask on so that you can see what you're working with. But I would tell you to turn off um, that entire folder. Also, in the paintable area, turn off any car decals, uh, color change logos, uh, blackouts, uh, rear spoiler, anything that might be in here that might have color on it already. Let's go ahead and turn that off, and that will vary uh, from template to template. Now that we've got this base template down and we want to change some colors, there's a couple of ways we can do it. Okay, one, uh, and this is probably the easiest way, is go to select, pick color range, uh, click any color on here, the green, and you can see it's highlighted in this box, or the red, the white is what the highlight is and what the, it's capturing, or the blue, uh, and you can see that the blue is captured there. So let's start with the green, click OK. And you'll see the marching ants appear all around the green. Now, there's a few ways that you can change this. One of the ways that I prefer is to create another layer with that paint. And I do that for a variety of reasons. I think for me personally, it's easier to manipulate. Hit Control J. That's the shortcut to create another layer. And now you will see uh, we have another layer that's shown up. Uh, it's got uh, captured only the green as far as from this pattern. So let's do that for the other two colors, all right? Uh, make sure you've selected the pattern again, the one that you were working on. Go to Select, Color Range. Let's take the red this time. Click OK, Control J. Now we've got the red layer here that you will see. Click that pattern one last time. Again, make sure it's the same pattern. Uh, color Range. And let's click the blue, capture all the blue. You'll see the marching ants appear, control J, and now what we have are the colors separated from this particular template on different layers. So let's, what can we do with this? Well, I'm going to show you what we can do with this. Let's create another folder and call it base paint or anything that you like. I want you to take these three layers that you have just created drag those up into that new one and now let's turn off the car pattern okay and you might see some things uh change color on you when you do that don't worry about that those are patterns uh that are required car decal is one and let's go up here to turn the mask on and car mandatory would probably be another now if you do not see um that it's it there you go car blackouts that's that's it you can usually find where those other missing colors are at. However, if there is something where it's like, hey, that's not covered, there's the spoiler, then you could go ahead and capture that color too. It is usually going to be whatever base template color, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, that this has, which on this one is that blue. All right, back up here to our folder and our new layers that we just created. And let's, we'll leave, we can leave the decal zone now. Um, we needed all of those uh, information pieces off while we were capturing the uh, layers that we wanted to ensure we got all of the color range within the document. Now, let's uh, start clicking some of these off, and you can see that we have captured each individual layer, because if we turn them all off, it's just going to be the base blue down there at the bottom, all right? If you turn each on individually, you will start to build different layers. 
Easy way to make these changes. Let's click that uh, layer one, the green layer here. Okay, go to effects, color overlay. And now you can use the box up here to select any little color that you choose. Okay, anything that you'd want. Easy way to change the colors on the car. Let's, uh, let's make that a nice bright white. Okay, and select okay. We can go to the red layer, do the same thing, effects, color overlay. It's going to uh, default to the color that you chose automatically. Let's choose a blue uh, for that one. Okay. Good to go. And then we're going to go to the third layer, which was the blue layer. Effects, color overlay. And for this one, we'll, I don't know, green, yellow, yellow. Let's go with a, let's go with a bright, bright, happy yellow. Okay. And you have changed the colors on the car just that easily. Now, a couple of things to note here. One, it is nice to use this technique because you can go back and change these colors as often as you want. Deepen them up, change it completely, whatever that you choose. You can always go back in here, double click on that layer where the effects is. Make sure you collect, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, click on the color overlay, hit the color. You can change it again. And, you know, there you go. Now you've got a, a different color change. Nothing's committed. But once you're committed to colors uh, that you prefer in here, so let's say we decided to go with, you know, instead of that uh, yellow, we lightened up the blue on the white. We're going to do a white here with that stripe. There we go. It's perfect. You can select each individual layer, okay, and rasterize the layer. And then you will see there in the box, oops, wrong one. You will see there in the box that it actually changes to the color that's on the car now. Before, it was still maintaining the color uh, that you had uh, selected previously from that pattern 0, 0, 3. All right? So that's one quick and easy way. Now, word of caution, if you will scroll in here. With a lot of these patterns, you're going to see some slight over overlap, okay? Um, artifacts, and sometimes you can get some nasty ones where it didn't blend properly with the new colors that you selected, but you've got uh, maybe some old of that red, blue, green. Uh, have we got any down here? Let's look. That might be hanging around. So be, be aware of that. I say that as just a word of caution. There's a few ways that you can uh, help to... to um, uh, not have those those artifacts and one is using the RGB channel these channels here which we're going to show uh, that next and it picks off a little bit cleaner image so let's do that now let's select another pattern and we're going to break this up uh, using the uh, color overlay and you know what we'll stay well you know what let's change this this will be helpful for us in the next showing uh, we'll go with pattern 004. Now, what I want you to do immediately is go ahead and create another folder. We'll call it Base Paint RGB. And let's talk about this technique. Now, highlight the pattern as always. And let's go ahead and click all of these off. And you can't turn this off because then you lose a layer. You got to select these individually underneath that paintable layer. All right. Make sure. Those are all off. Uh, base paint RGB can be off for now, uh, considering there's nothing in the folder. But you want to concentrate on this pattern right here. Make sure it's highlighted. What we're going to do is click channels, and you'll see the RGB, which is the combined channels, the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. We're going to start with the blue channel on the bottom. And make sure that is highlighted and own by itself. OK, click the marching ants button down here at the bottom. You'll see that's going to grab these colors. Go back over to the layer. And while that is still highlighted, I want you to click new layer down here in the bottom and click the mask button. And what that did is just captured it just captured all of that blue channel information and placed it on this new layer. All right. We're going to do that for each one. Make sure you turn that off. And make sure you select the layer again before you go to the next step. So let's go back to channels. I'm going to turn off the blue and the red. 
highlight the green. Make sure that you have clicked on that. Again, the marching ants captures the data in the green. Go back to layers. Go click the, the layer that you newly created. New layer. Click the mask. Now it's captured the green data on this layer. And we're going to do this one last time. Again, turn off your new layer. Click your car pattern, channels. Turn off the blue, the green, and make sure you have the red on, and then you click on it. Okay, if you're here, even though you have this on, you're going to capture this data. We want to make sure that we're on the proper channel. So red, it's on. It's the only one on. Click the marching ants. Capture the data. Again, click the last layer that you created so that you can keep this in order. It just makes it easier. And mask, and there we go. Now, what have we done? Well, we have captured the RGB data similar to what we've done with the select color. We're going to drag these and place those in that new base paint layer. However, this is a little bit more accurate way of capturing them. Now, this does not always work out with all colors. Sometimes there can be uh, some bizarreness to it that works out. And I'm no Photoshop expert, so don't ask me why. But you have three layers here that you can choose colors for now, and it will adapt to those. So let's go back to this blue that we had. Okay, select any color. We're choosing the blue. Go to the paint bucket. While you've got this channel highlighted, click it. All right, and when you click that, now you see that you've got some data that has appeared, uh, captured off, off of that, I believe that was our blue channel anyway, um, from the previous, um, from the previous car pattern. Uh, that was actually white, wasn't it, in the other one? Let's, let's, let's still, let's try to stick with the, what we had. Okay, so let's just change it again, put it on the white, good to go, all right. The next one, I believe, was the blue, and we're going to do the same thing. Select our color, place it on there, um, and then we had a lighter. Actually, I think top one was the blue, and the second one was a lighter blue, which all we got to do is choose that, select, and there we go. Now, we've just changed the colors using the RGB channel. What does that do for us? Well, a lot of times, this is going to be much cleaner, as you can see. We don't have any artifacts that are showing up inside of the lines. This is a much cleaner imprint as far as the colors placed upon the vehicle. And that is the one major benefit when it comes to using the RGB channels. Yes, it still accomplishes essentially uh, the same thing. Uh, well, we kind of, because, oh, that's right. We selected another pattern, my fault. But if you'll go back and look at the base paint that we created, you can see the artifacts. Some are pretty heavy. And again, sometimes you can still get some red, blue, green from the original um, pattern um, in here. But if we go to the pattern where we did the RGB, you're going to see this is a much cleaner pull. That's for those of you who are just a little bit particular. Uh, I would highly recommend using the RGB when you can. And again, we'll turn on the patterns, what uh, layers again, so you can kind of see. And there's the car, right? I do think this is the best way uh, and use an RGB, but it doesn't always work out. Okay, now let's talk about the cool things that you can do to make your car unique. And that is combining these patterns. Now, everybody has access to the base paints. Um, and you can see these patterns a lot as a result. They are easy to paint. They're in the UI, etc. Well, if you come back to the two patterns that we created, okay, which was, uh, that was RGB pool. This was the original one, but I went back and did an RGB pool on this so it would just be clean and the colors are accurate. So what we're going to do is uh, combine these paint layers, right? Um, again, I like the striping across the top of the car, but I want to get rid of this bottom stripe and put this one in its place. Easy way to do that. Make sure that the layer, and you can do this a number of ways, but I would say put the layer that you're going to uh, block out this uh, up top above um, the other pattern, and we're going to put a mask on it. Go over here, select your black, <clears throat> your paintbrush, and then we're just going to start painting like this. And you're going to see what's appearing. 
that uh, stripe, as far as on the other pattern, is now on the bottom of the car. We'll capture that too, since there's some blue in, in that piece. You can always change it. Make sure uh, you got a good mask. And look, there we go. And all we've done is just mask between the two patterns. That is one way to accomplish this and combine uh, different patterns that you've you've got here, right? So we're, we've got data from one folder and from another. Um, just using masks, you can get very creative um, combining the different patterns and, and create your own custom uh, paint job without having to know how, well, how to create your own custom shapes. If you just don't have that image in your mind, this is an easy way to allow you to do that. And let's talk about one more way you can create patterns. So you'll remember when we just did a color capture earlier, that is also uh, a way that you can use this. So for example, let's just say, uh, you know what, we'll just use, where were those, like, there we go. Just, just, uh, I got it. It's, it's, yeah, it's kind of flame-like, but bear with me. Um, let's do select color range, and we're gonna grab, let's say the green, uh, as far as the stripes, capture that, okay? Marching Ants, Control J to create that new layer, all right? And then let's drag this layer up to uh, just the, the top of those, those other ones that we were working on. Turn that off. Turn on the other two base layers that we did before. Now look, now you've got this uh, new pattern here that you can uh, work with. Uh, I don't know, maybe you want it here, um, there. Um, you can, whoops, don't drag it in the folder. I wanted to drag it in between um, so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, it, again, it's just a layer. Uh, you can, you know, make it, make this any color you want, do whatever you want with it. But the point is, look, the world's your oyster, guys. Uh, be creative. Use these different patterns. You've got a couple of different ways you can capture those, either through RGB channels like I showed or the color um, uh, select with uh, the color overlay in order to combine all of these patterns. And with that, you can create a lot of really cool, unique paint jobs without a whole lot of trouble. Of course, once you've got your baseline selected, your pattern, you can start to bring in any type of decal that you would prefer. Uh, you know, I'd recommend making another folder, which we've talked about before, um, and place those stickers in there. That way you can use these patterns and later for creating that custom spec map, which we'll talk about in a future video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you, consider hitting that like button. It really helps the channel. You can also subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload any additional content. Follow me on Twitter to find out when I'm streaming. Thanks for watching.